good friend, Mr. Dick Powell. Dick, are you there? I'm here. I'm ready to go. All right. It is It is a privilege to have you on the show today. and We're going to be talking about Dick just launched his new book, and he had a class last night. And uh, tell us a little bit about your book. You know, it, this is pretty exciting, actually. The book is called How Not to Lose Your Bass in Business. And it was really written from the standpoint of a young entrepreneurial person getting in business for the first time or a person that's been in business and can't quite get over the hump and maintain their company. And, and it really started that way. I know that I got one of the first original <laughs> autographed books way back in the day. Uh, you know, we put this out a little too early when we first did it. Uh, we got real excited, did a self-publishing job, and and it was okay. But it really wasn't what I wanted to see out there in print. Uh, a publisher contacted us. They said, boy, you've got some really good things here, and we really like your book, but, boy, you need some help publishing it. So uh, they jumped on board, and... and um, I never thought in the world I would have a publicist or a publisher or a uh, artist on staff or any of those things, but I sure do now. So it's kind of fun. Well, you know, Zig Ziglar, when he first wrote his first book, it was See You at the Top. That's how he got started. Yeah. And it took him, you know, if you if you read the book and you've listened to his material over the years, he, um, he has talked about how getting over the first hump that he was when he started to write the book so many years ago <laughs> and uh, just just this last week um, one of our um, radio personalities on Life Improvement Radio had Tom Ziegler mm -hmm. on the show and I thought well, it was such a great honor to have that when, when I talked to you last week or week before last actually about being on the show this week I thought two great authors two great coaches on this on Life Improvement Radio back to back you can't you can't beat that. Well, I appreciate you saying that. This has really been a long time in coming. I, I won't lie to you. Uh, we left the corporate world way back in 2002, and, and a friend of mine said I should do this right then, and we really didn't We didn't get started on it for a long time. I mean, we had the notes. We were doing some lecture series, but it really took a, a, my really good friend to push me very, very hard to get it all down and put it into a book form so I could share it with those around me. Um, and what we found very quickly was is that not only did the people who bought the book want more, but they were passing it on to their friends and reusing it. So we, we, uh, we knew it was time to get a publisher, do it the correct way, get ready for the next three books coming out. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's been a lot of fun. You know, one of the things, Dick, about um, the uh, one of my, one of my favorite books is "Who Moved My Cheese" <laughs> by Spencer Johnson. You know, we've talked about this many times in One Minute Manager. You bet. And and one of the things I want you to tell the listeners about is about you know the story behind the story, and you kind of tell them how you came up with uh, the the title for your book. Well, the title for the book came from uh, one of my lady friends at church. She's 89 years old, and I had shown her the original manuscript, and, and she said that the the uh, the name of the book that I had was How to Get Started in Business was really boring, and it would never sell. And she realized that the, the story behind this came from writing on a professional bass fisherman and how he ran his company, and she came up with it, How Not to Lose Your Bass. And... It just got to be a funny joke, but then she pushed it harder, and that's that's the name on the front of the book. Uh, from there, we went and we were talking to another gentleman, uh, Dr. Free, and he's he's one of the founders of Gatorade. He'd probably yell at me if I said that on the air, but um, he got a hold of the manuscript and said, boy, this is good stuff. And I said, well, will you, would you write the forward? And next thing I know, Doc was writing the forward. Um but it all really stems from a, a set of fishing trips that I had with a professional bass fisherman in, in Orlando. And what a great number of things he taught me about business that I never learned in school and I never learned in college. I never learned it from anybody else. But he was such an a avid, direct person that he let me 
write down his thoughts and feelings. And uh, boy, does it, it work. It really works. Well, one of the greatest, the, I think one of the great privileges is not you just being in my co coach, is some of the classes that we have taken <laughs> um, over the last couple of years. And I think I've taken one of your classes twice, maybe three times. And that was the 21... Uh, Irrefutable yeah. Laws of Leadership. Yeah, by John Maxwell. And, you know, one of my good friends that was the gentleman that way back in the day when I was just starting getting into the ministry and stuff, if a lot of the listeners doesn't know that I'm an, I am an ordained minister, and Vince Rizzo has now joined the... Um, John Maxwell family with you. Yes, he has. And, and uh, he's now a coach. As a matter of fact, I was just talking to him um, just a little bit ago because he had one of his classes that I was interested mm -hmm. in taking. Well, Vince, I went through Vince's class of um, back in 2000 mm -hmm. and was an ordained minister through his organization. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but um, Dick, give us a little bit of background about how you got to where you're at today. Boy. You know, I started teaching leadership way back when I was probably 11 or 12 years old at Boy Scouts and didn't really understand what I was doing, didn't really kind of grasp it. But all through my career, I found that uh, every time I was doing something, I was being prepared for the next step. And so even though I spent 30 years at the telephone company and I ended up as the director of education there, all the time in between, after hours and things, I was teaching leadership for Boy Scouts for America across the country. I uh, also had the great privilege of, of teaching out for uh, leadership out at the Big Boy Scout camp uh, in Cimarron, New Mexico, Philmont. And that really started to prepare me for what I was going to do. Uh, I found my passion was really helping people help themselves get to where they wanted to go. And we realized very quickly, if you're not developing yourself, that you really are going to struggle developing your company. And it all starts with, with the inner before you get to outer. And, and that's something that is not taught in any of the colleges. It's not taught in any of the schools. Um, so, you know, we always say our company, Earth, Wind, Fire, Water, Training, and Development, is that link or the bridge between academia world and the real life world. And, and it's always funny to watch academia people's eyes roll in the back of their head because they get it. They understand that there's something missing between the four-year college education and actually going to work and getting a job. Well, you gotta have you, um, you gotta have those boots on the ground <laughs> and plant solid, as you would always say. You, you've got one of my one of my favorite things. If you're not um, one of your favorite things, if you're not looking out for yourself, someone else is and will, or something so, like that. It's been a while since I've heard you say that. <laughs> well, you know. Here's the thing. If you're not planning your life, someone else is and will. There you go. That's the one. And I wrote that 20-some years ago, and, and it's set on our desk here in our office, in our company, because Robert and I figured out a long time ago that if we didn't have a plan, someone else was making the plans for us. Uh, during my 30-year career at the phone company, you know, somebody told me when, what day I had off, when I was going to go on vacation, how much money I was going to make, and everybody else was making all my plans for me. Well, when you work for yourself, you better make your own plans. And so we encourage people, even though they're working for someone else, never to think in that manner. Always think in the manner that you're working for yourself. You own the company. And so, therefore, make your own plans. What's the legacy you're looking to leave? It's a different Most way. Definitely. Yeah, it's a different way of thinking about it, isn't it? Most definitely. Yeah. Well, you know, in and over the last five years that we've been working together as my coach, mm -hmm. there there has been times when um, you're just straightforward <laughs> and, and you don't you don't push no blunts and everything else about it. Either you're, you're as as my uh, grandfather would used to say, you're either going to get off the pot or you're going to get on the pot. Which one you going to go with? Yeah. And, and and a lot of people don't realize that you know doing doing something that you like doing, mm -hmm. you got to do it right. 
Eric and I have been doing this radio show for over a year, and when I when I started doing the radio show over a year ago, I was trying to figure out what the best guest was to come on the show, mm-hmm. how to, how to find the right guest, and over a year, I've you know I've kept trying to find the right guest on the show, and I've had a bunch of people say, mm-hmm. "Oh yeah, they'll be on here," and then they they backed out. Mm-hmm. But yeah. building a leadership behind somebody and, you know, believing in what I believe in because, you know, you have been my business coach for, I guess, what, about five years now? It's almost. been a while. been a while. Yeah, been a long time. And one of the things that, you know, when I started this uh, new adventure <laughs> that um, that we've been talking about doing, mm-hmm. when I asked you that would you come on the program, I was really excited that you accepted Thanks. And Thanks. the next, the next thing is taking this to the next level. You got a new book that you're going to be publishing soon, <laughs> and I know that you just got, um, you just got this one under your thing. Can you give us some key tips on um, one or two right before we get a break? We got about three, about three minutes and thirty seconds. Okay. Can you kind of give us two key pointers in your book about not to lose your bass in business? The, the big key point is, is it's always all about them. It's never about you. If you're going to be in business, you have to always be thinking about them, the other person. No matter what it is you're trying to sell or what you're trying to take and do, it's always about them. So you need three things that you have to do. And real quick, this, you need a vision. You need a future picture of where and what it looks like that you're going to achieve. You need to have your mission down pat. And that's your purpose. Why are you doing this? And you need to have a strategy. And that's your plan. Those three things will always take you where you want to go. But the three-legged stool falls over if one of them is missing. And most people... Most people do real well on the vision. They do real well on the mission, but when they get to the strategy and then to execute the strategy is where they start falling down because that's where it's hard. And that's where you have to do those same things over and over, daily, 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 to make them come true. And it gets frustrating. And I know that. But that's where persistence pays off. And that's the whole ticket. That, that's really the biggest part of the whole book is this persistence piece. Um, you know, we have a regular six-step plan, and a six-step plan we've seen work in churches, we've seen it work in individuals, we've seen it work in corporations. So that's that's really the basis of the whole book. Well, I, there's been a, there's been a lot that um, you've. Um, classes that we've taken mm-hmm. and stuff and we'll we'll uh, we'll talk about that some of the classes that you teach of that okay. I think that um, in the next segment I'd like you to talk about the 21 irrefutable laws you got yeah it? and how how and I and I'll be honest with you how it's really helped me because you know when I first when we first took the class when I first took the class back in 2011 you know, I thought that uh, that was just, it's just another class. Because, mm-hmm. you know, I've, took, I've, I've read the book Zig Ziglar's um, See at the Top and several of his other books. And, you know, and I've listened to a lot of uh, Spencer Johnson and Ken Burchett with mm-hmm. the One Minute Manager and stuff. But mm-hmm. the, the 21 Immutable Laws is something that if they don't know what's in it, well, I'll tell you. They don't know what they're missing. You got that. So, right. Dick, we'll be right back after this. You're listening to Life Improvement Radio with Technology Today. Yeah. I'm your host, Chuck Ryan. We'll be right back after this. <laughs> Dick, guys are out. I'm, okay. so, I'm here. Yep, you guys are on break. You can chat now. Me too. Cool. Chuck, I'm going to okay. talk about two things. One is I'll bring talk about the 21 Irrefutable Laws of Leadership. Mm-hmm. And because of the other show coming up, we, we want to take a few seconds and talk about the 21 Most Powerful Minutes on a Leader's Day. Um, the same book, but written from a, uh, a biblical standpoint. Okay. Okay. Uh, Eric, what, what we're going to do is we're going to 
we're talking about is Dick's going to be coming on WOTG okay. at between 3 and 4 o'clock daily. Okay. And he's going to be teaching to pastors and stuff like that and helping pastors and ministers and ministries out on the radio. And I thought it was a great opportunity to talk about it, if that's okay. Yeah, definitely. Okay. So you got two commercials, then your intro will start back in. All right, I'll be right back. Okay. <laughs> Oh my goodness! I think Chuck's dead. I think he, I think he fell out of his chair. I think he did too. What happens when you forget to take your headset off when you get when you get to?